This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome to Valheim. So this game does not hold your hand and leaves a lot to you to figure out. So today we're just going to cover some general tips in no specific order for beginners just to kind of help fill in a lot of the gaps that the game leaves for you. Let's get to it. So relatively early on, the game will tell you to craft a workbench. What it doesn't tell you after you craft said workbench is you can't really do too much with it. It tells you that it needs a roof, but it does allow you to build a bunch of stuff around it. So it will give you the options to go into buildings here and you can build around it. Now, what you're going to want to do is start to build a house. Don't do that. Simply place down your crafting station like I have done here, and then you are going to build a small lean to around it like you see here. All you need is four walls and two of the low roofs. So four of these here, two of these here, and then two of these here. Once you've done that, you can use your workbench to its full capability. So if you look here, I can now use my workbench. So what this is going to allow you to do is quickly repair all of your tools. It goes into another tip, repairing costs you nothing, costs you nothing to repair. You just need a workbench and you go up to it, you just spam repair to uh, until everything is repaired. It's going to allow you to repair your ax early game because you're gonna need to farm a bunch of wood to build your house. And in most cases, if you don't have a setup like this, you're not gonna be able to repair your ax and you're probably gonna just try to make another one. But if you build a small setup like this, you can repair your ax. And on top of that, you will be able to craft a hoe, which is super helpful because that's going to allow you to level the ground for your house as I've done up here. So once you have the hoe equipped, you just right click, it brings up a menu just like the building hammer does. You select level ground and then you can just spam out level ground to level out the area that you want to build your house. Once you have your workbench and this little setup done like you see here, if you have your building hammer equipped, you can see that there's a small line going around the area here. This is the area in which your workbench has an effect. So you can see here, it goes all the way around the workbench. Now you're like, Fire Spark, well, what if the area where I built my little lean-to is a little too close to where I decided to build my house? Let's well, find there's nothing that says you can't have more workbenches all over the place. So if you build your little setup here and then you decide, well, I want my house to be over here. So over here is where I'm going to level off my ground. You can see here, I have the same circle. So you can just slap down another workbench, start to level off the ground, then start to place your flooring, build your house, and then you can come back over to where your other setup is, your little temporary setup here, and just take everything down by hitting the middle mouse button and you will break whatever wall you've placed. So if I place the wall there, click my middle mouse button, you can see it instantly shatters and I get wood back. Doing this will streamline the beginning of the game and building process and making your home and everything so much for you that you'll thank me later. Also, early game, when you need wood and you're trying to craft your first axe, you don't have to pick up the branches. You're going to see branches on the ground. You're going to be attempted to just run around and pick up those branches. Uh, you're, it's going to feel more natural to you because you're doing that with the stones as well. Uh, you can actually punch these small trees. Doing this will level up your unarmed combat and make it easy for you to get some wood right from the beginning of the game so you're not running around hunting the branches that are on the ground. There's a lot of different skills in the game and in order to level up said skills, you actually have to hit something. So if I just slash this knife in the air like this, nothing happens. I won't get any experience from it. If I hit tab to bring up my skills here and we take a look at my axes, for example, so you can see I'm really close to leveling with axes. So if I take an equipment an axe right now and I swing it around, you should see that little bit move there. So if we just swing it for a minute, it should go up if it was leveling, but it won't. So if we take a look, it hasn't moved at all. However, if I just beat on something and it doesn't have to be something that actually takes damage, like this stone here, the stone takes no damage, but I'm actually hitting something and you can see my skill with axes just improved. And if I continue to hit this, 
it will continue to go up because I'm actually hitting something. Now, the tool is losing durability. I'm not sure if it's actually connecting with something that causes the skill to go up or if it's the loss of durability on the tool that causes your skill to go up. But either way, uh, you can just train on a rock. Just find a rock that you can't break, which will be most of them because the only thing that can break them is pickaxe and pickaxes. So all of these stone tools or even your fists, if we unequip that, I can just sit here and punch this rock and I can train unarmed combat as well. Leads us into how your skills go up. Your skills go up just by using them so for example jumping all i have to do to level up my jumping skill is just jump in place or sprinting i just sprint sneaking sneaking from what i can tell you have to sneak near something so you hit control to go in the crouch like this and now i'm sneaking but i did this for a while around nothing and it wouldn't go up but I did it next to something, so like find a deer or a boar or anything. I like using deer, and you can just sneak right up near them and around them, and your sneaking skill will increase. The next tip is pay attention to your weapons, because certain things slow your movement by different amounts. As you see here, equipping this shield slows my speed by 5%. Equipping this hammer slows my movement speed by 20%. The bow, 5%. The knife doesn't slow my speed at all. So make sure you're paying attention to the stats of your weapons and don't just run around with something in your hand that may slow your speed. So for example, if I equip the axe and the shield, which the shield is 5%, and the axe is 5%, I'm getting a total of 10% movement speed reduction. So I'm not moving across the map as fast as I could if I just unequipped everything, which leads us to unequipping everything. You can unequip everything quick and easy just by hitting R. You throw it on your back like that. And then what's cool is you can hit R again really quick just to bring that back. So if I'm just want to run really quick across the map and I want to be ready to fight and I don't want to reach up and hit two and three, I can just hit R and bam, I'm ready to go. Early game, you're going to want to eat more than just the measly little berries that you're picking up from the berry bushes and you're going to see deer and you may not be able to craft a bow right from the get-go but that's fine craft a knife go into sneak mode and you can farm deer really easy like this so you just slowly walk up to the deer make sure you're at a distance before you start sneaking because they can see you pretty far away um, you will run out of stamina as you're sneaking, but that is fine. It's no big deal because if you just stop moving for a hot second, you will regain your stamina. So now all we have to do is slowly sneak up behind a deer because the knife does a ton of backstab damage. And bam, there we go. One hit kill. And you can see his buddies didn't even know. And that little guy over there didn't even notice. So now I can just go over here to the other deer. And that guy spooked my deer. We still got a deer over here that did not get spooked because we were sneaking the whole time. So we can just come up here to the deer like this. And once again, bam, there you go. So that, that's a really easy way early game before you get a bow to get a hold of deer and get a hold of the meat chunks here as well as deer hide. That's going to lead us into talking about food so in order to cook your food you're going to need a campfire and then you come over here to crafting and you need a cook station cooking station then you just place the cooking station over your campfire as you see that i have done there and then when you walk up to it depending on what you're looking at if you're looking at the cooking station or the campfire you're going to get two different prompts so if i look at the fire you can see it wants me to put wood in there i can hit e to stoke the fire and add more fuel to it because it will eventually burn out you can see it's got two of ten don't worry it does burn for a really long time but it will eventually run out if i look at the cooking station all i have to do is hit e to put the the meat on there now if i want to cook something specific all i have to do is drag it up to my hot bar because you can see it says hit one through eight and then i can just hit seven on my hot bar right now and i would cook that specific thing if i didn't just want to cook whatever's in my inventory now next you want to listen very carefully for the little sizzle because you only have two stages it goes from that right there now which is cooked so it had raw to cooked and if i leave it on there any longer it's going to sizzle again and when it does that it will go to charcoal so early game before you get the recipe to create the charcoal kiln which takes the certling cores i guess that's how you pronounce that 
burning food because you will end up with more meat than you know what to do with at some point into charcoal is a really good way to get charcoal before you make the charcoal kiln. So then that leads us into talking about the different effects on food. You can see right now, I don't have any food. Like I don't have anything over here in my little bar. I have 25 hit points and I have a super low stamina bar with only three chunks in it. If we take a look at my inventory, I got a bunch of different food here. So I have the grilled neck tail which provides 35 health and 20 stamina. It lasts for 1,000 seconds. It also provides two HP per tick. If we take a look at the cooked meat, it gives me 40 health, 30 stamina, lasts 1,200 seconds, and provides with two HP per tick. If we take a look at the mushrooms, they provide 15 health, 20 stamina, and they last 600 seconds and provide one HP per tick. Now, all of this stacks in this little bar here. So a really good combo early game in order to get a ton of stamina and health is to eat one necktail, eat one cooked meat, and then eat one mushroom because you can see the mushroom provides 15 health, 20 stamina. The raspberries only provide 10 health, 20 stamina, and only one HP per tick. You can see now we have a much larger health bar and if I sprint, a much larger stamina bar. This is a really good combo if you're going out adventuring. If you're not going out adventuring, I advise to j save the neck tail, eat one cooked meat, eat one mushroom in one raspberry. Later on, you'll get the ability to cook more complex foods like this Queen's Jam. You can see that it provides a bonus of 30 health, 40 stamina, lasts for 1,200 seconds and gives me two HP per tick. There's also bees in the game. You will find uh, beehives on the side of old decrepit houses that are falling apart. And then you can make a beehive and you can harvest the beehive for honey. Honey's really great because it provides you five HP per tick. You can see it only gives you 20 health, 20 stamina, only lasts for a measly 300 seconds, but it gives you five HP per tick, which will stack with the two HP per tick that you're getting from a grilled tail or cooked meat. That leads us into talking about the rested buff. So when you're inside shelter, you, as you see here, and once I'm no longer wet, I will start getting the rested buff. If we click the compendium up here, you can see my active effects. So it says rested right here. You can see now it just popped up on the screen that I am now resting. And you can see up there at the top, it shows that I'm resting. After a period of time of being in some type of comfort and having that rested buff, I currently have comfort of six in my house. And we'll talk about how to get that up here in a second. I will start resting and you can see that having the rested buff gives you plus 50 to health regen and plus 100% to stamina regen. So it doubles your stamina regen. And after a period of time of resting, you can see that my rested buff is now not ticking down. Once you are rested for a period of time and that kicks into effect during a resting period, it will hang out there until you stop resting. So now if I go outside and I start to do stuff, you can see that will start to tick down. Now there's a few different ways you can go about resting and there's a few different ways that you can get that comfort level to go up. So having a bed in your house will provide comfort level. Putting stuff in your house like this deerskin rug or this stool over here will increase your overall comfort level in your house. So you can see once I'm in my house and I'm close by to my bed and all my different things here, I start resting. Now, if I'm just in my sheltered area, I'm not because what triggers this whole resting thing is also being next to a campfire. So you gotta have a campfire or some type of fire. Then you gotta have the amenities around said campfire. So you can see in close proximity to the campfire, I have my bed, I have the deerskin rug, and I have this little stool over here. All of these things combined give me the comfort level of six, but you don't need that. You can just place a campfire and set beside of it. This resting buff is super valuable when you are out running around and makes a huge difference in your stamina and health regen and how easy the game is when you're out and about adventuring. 
it's really easy to get the buff anywhere you're at now it won't be for as long as the duration that you get when you are back at your house because the comfort level won't be as high but you can get it for eight minutes at a time when you're out running around simply by placing down a campfire so be sure to keep five stone on you and two wood at all times so you can easily just place down a campfire when you're out and about so all we have to do when we're out and about pretend we'll just pretend that oh no my resting buff has ran out so i place a campfire like that and then we'll just unequip our hammer we'll get close to the campfire so that we have the little campfire buff now all we have to do is hit x on our keyboard to set down and then after a second it'll pop up there that we're getting the resting buff now we only have a comfort of one and that's fine like i said that'll refresh the buff for eight minutes so we just hang out here for a hot second and you'll see that the rested timer will eventually go up to eight minutes and then freeze there and there we go it just popped it's at eight minutes we are now rested so all we have to do now is just get up click on our hammer and then break down our fire we will get our five stones back and we can get wood super easy anywhere that we're at pretty much on the map and then we're good to go now we're rested for another eight minutes you will also get this buff if you are in your house and you sleep when you sleep you should wake up with a full rested buff so when you're building your house you may be tempted to use some of these floor pieces as your roofing do not do that you can see here i have done that but then i ended up capping it with the actual roof pieces that is because if you do that you will not get the shelter buff if you take a look here i just made a little tiny little lean to thing if we walk in here and we shut the door you can see i currently have the shelter buff if i quit my hammer and i delete the ceiling there you can see that the buff went away now if i grab one of the floor pieces and i put it up there you can see now I'm not getting the sheltered buff and that is because it doesn't register these wood floor pieces as a roof. They're not a roof. You got to use the thatch roof as your roof. So if it says it's a roof piece, it will count. Don't be afraid to destroy your build when you're building. If you take a look here, this wood floor piece costs me two wood to place it down. If I place it down and I decide I don't like it, I just break it and then I walk up to it and I get two wood back. So. With the wood pieces, I can't speak for later game stuff. I haven't made it there yet, but with the wood pieces, you should get back all of the resources that you spent to place it down when you break it. Let's talk about the map. First off, your mini map up there. You can zoom in and out of your mini map with the less than greater than keys. So you can see I can zoom in, I can zoom out. You can also see I have a bunch of markers there. You can place markers anywhere on your map and you can give them names. So you select which symbol you want over here, pick whatever symbol you want just by clicking on it and then just double click on your map. And then you can see it pops up a text box down there for me to give it a name. I don't have to give it a name at this point. I can just hit the escape key and back out and it doesn't get a name. If I want to remove that, I just right click on it and it's gone. We can go back, we can give it a name, hit enter, and then it shows up like all of these other ones do that I have on the map. If I want to get rid of it, just right click and it's gone. You can see down here it says visible to other players. If you're playing with friends, just click this and it will make you visible on the map to your friends. Now, keep in mind that if you're playing on a server where there's PVP, you may not want to do this because this shows you to everyone, not just your friends. But if you're playing co-op with a buddy and you want them to see where you're at and you want to see where they're at, you both can just come in here and click that and there you go. Now, keep in mind that if you are playing on a server and you are playing PvP, you can turn PvP on or off at any time. So if you do show where you're at, I still don't recommend doing it for PvP because you could get griefed, but you cannot take damage from other players unless you enable PvP. So you can see right here, it says take damage from other players, and then we click that. PvP is enabled. You can see it's enabled because I have the two swords crossing. We click it again and then PvP damage is disabled. When you have PvP disabled and you're playing co-op with a buddy, you both can actually beat the crap out of each other with weapons and train said weapons without actually taking any damage. Relatively early on in the game, you're gonna run into the Black Forest. This is a dangerous place. The crow comes up, tells you it's a dangerous place and to be careful. This place, however, is super handy and has a resource that I did not realize until just recently that you can get relatively early game. So if you look here, we got beech trees, beech trees. We also have fir trees. But what you want to look for in this forest is a pine tree. So if we head a little bit deeper into the forest, you can see these tall trees here. They're a little bit different from the fir. You can see here it's lower. The leaves are the 
needles are lower on it but if we look at the pine trees they're really tall and all the branches and stuff are up at the top if we take a look at it here you can see it says pine if you harvest these and I don't know if you need anything other than just the normal axe I'm using a flint axe which we'll talk about where to get flint here in a second but if you use a flint axe or a normal axe you should be able to do it and we harvest it you can see that it gives me something there called core wood. So if we highlight over here, core wood, perfect for building log cabins. That's true. It's going to get you a bunch of different recipes, one of which is the recipe for this stag breaker hammer. This thing is super good for when you're fighting a bunch of enemies at one time because it has a massive AOE. Now it is a club, so make sure you train up clubs by just making a basic wood club and training with that from the get-go. That's gonna increase the damage. Oh look, perfect timing. If we use this, you can see that it knocks the enemies back. It knocks them back in a large AOE. So you can simply just do that and keep them at a distance from you. Now, I don't recommend sprinting with this thing because it does chew up a buttload of stamina when you swing it. You can see there, it's eating up a bunch of stamina, but it has a massive AOE, has massive knockback, and it's super handy for fighting large groups of enemies. And all it takes is a bunch of deer trophies and some core wood and I think some leather. If you are looking for flint, you want to go down by the water's edge. So if you look here on the map, you can see this is what water looks like. Just find water and there's flint all over near the water. Sometimes it's like in the water too, but you can see there, there's a little piece there and it's just kind of all over. Just run along the water's edge and you should find it super easy it's also where you will find the necks so these little guys right here if you want to farm neck tails so it's not going to take very long before you realize there's a bunch of large stones around and if you played survival games you're going to know that those are stone nodes and you're going to be like how do i get a hold of those how do i break them because nothing i use does any damage to them and that is because that's how the game goes about gating your progression once you are able to damage those you can also start farming for metal and that gets you into your next whole progression in in the game and in order to get the pickaxe the antler pickaxe which you need in order to break those stones and get into doing that you need to fight the first boss which is a giant lightning deer boss and to do that you're going to need two deer trophies so if you start at the starting ring here that you can see everybody should start here you as far as i know you always start in the starting ring and you walk up to this and you hit E and register location, it shows you that there's a little thing here and that, that name there, that's the name of the boss. So once you have your deer trophies, you're going to go over to that location and the bird will come and talk to you and tell you that this is a mystical altar. All you have to do is just offer up the two deer trophies and then the boss will spawn and you have to fight it. Once you have completed that and you've killed the boss, you will get the antlers that you need in order to make the antler pickaxe. You will also get a trophy. You bring that trophy back to the main circle. And when you bring that trophy back to the sacrificial stone, it will give you the option to hang it there. You can see that all of the trophy or all of them, see it says trophy hook, attach item. I don't have it, so I can't attach it. They all have it when you look at the hook. Once you've done that, it will give you the option to activate your first power. So if we take a look here, you can see that my selected forsaken power is that whatever his name is. And when I activate it, it gives me a negative 60% usage, stamina usage to my jump and run. You can see it down there at the bottom. I can activate that in any time by hitting the F key. It lasts for five minutes and has a 20 minute cooldown. Now, I don't know if they're all like that, but this one is. Last but not least, there's trolls on the map. They did not show up for me, or at least I did not see any until I defeated the deer boss. I don't know if it's a situation where once you've defeated the deer boss that it knows and they start to spawn. They may spawn before that. I'm not sure. They're super easy to kill. Do not be intimidated by them. Simply craft a bow and craft a bunch of wooden arrows. That's all you need to fight them. And then they're really easy to kite. As you see here, all I do is just shoot and then I don't even run most of the time. I just step backwards as I'm shooting. Fire, fire, fire. When it gets close, then I'll maybe sprint for a hot second. But you don't want to sprint too much because then you'll run out of stamina. Because as you're aiming the bow, it does eat stamina. 
and then you just fire at it and just continuously kite it they're really easy to kite if you're especially if you're in an open area i highly recommend kiting them to an open area it makes it easier you can literally kite them in a circle if you can get them to an open field if you can't and you're doing it in the woods just make sure you pay attention to where you're running constantly look back and forth look at the troll shoot look where you're running make sure you're not running into any obstacles and then just kite them along and keep firing at them okay so that is going to wrap it up for this episode hopefully you found this video helpful if you did consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when i upload other videos i don't just cover this game i make guides for all kinds of different games so you never know when i'm going to be making a guide for a game you may be playing all right that is going to wrap it up for this episode if you like what you saw consider that sub button i want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible y'all are absolutely amazing people if you'd like to join my league crew patreon supporters please check out the link in the description below if you enjoyed this video please leave a comment down below let me know what you thought if you're shy you don't like to comment just hit that thumbs up button and show your support until next time thanks for watching